Go ahead and do a video. So you guys need to be quiet. Oh my gosh. Can you like try not to put... <laughs> You don't need to move the Tabasco right now, John. There's no need to move the Tabasco. Oh, I gotta pee. I should have went pee. Why are you, why are you moving everything? Seriously? Oh my god. I'm gonna start for real now. I know we have these funny intros, but today is the day. I'm not gonna put this in the editing. I'm not gonna even put it in. I'm gonna put it in. Alright. Let us begin. Hello, everybody. So today is going to be, again, another short little video for you guys. Um, I'm going to be talking about what I see a lot of students or amateur artists uh, make mistakes in. Uh, someone asked me, hey, you know, what is it something that, what is it that we can do as young artists or aspiring artists, um, whether you're a student or just starting out, uh, what can we do to get better, What make our portfolio look better? And I, I have... Put it down to a few things, I'm going to just do three, but there's plenty of things that can go wrong. But here are the, some of the major stuff that I see, some things that I continuously see in my, my students' work and the things I constantly try to correct. Um, one of them would be values. Values is probably one of the hardest things for people to wrap their mind around. And everybody understands what black and white looks like. And even painting in black and white is not as, as hard as it may seem uh, when you first start. But it definitely is hard. In fact, it's probably one of the hardest things you can get. And there's a few levels to value. Well, one is the graphic nature. Like the, the difference between something that is dark and something that is light. And I don't mean, I don't mean like this is being lit differently. I'm talking about like this is a darker, this cabinet is dark and this is light. I don't know if you guys can see. This is dark and this is light. And you guys can tell that. You guys know that. But then you then also have the second part of value, which is lighting, where you see the light hitting my, my face and my arms and my body. Like, it's just lit now. But the graphic, the local values are different still. And you can see the difference. And you know that they're different. Uh, a great way to, to, to test this is to to see if you have local values that are different. If you do not, then adjust that by using overlay layers or whatnot, or whatever your medium is. I don't want to just say Photoshop. But in Photoshop, I use overlay layers. And to test your lighting, try to see if you actually understand your forms. Like, do you know if it's a spherical shape or a cylindrical shape? And if so, are you rendering it as so? And I mean, like, the, the, the whole thing. Not just the little pieces, like as a whole, are all the major forms being lit correctly? And those are two things that I constantly try to tell people to practice. Not so much color. Color is actually subordinate. And once you start to learn your values, you realize that immediately. And almost all painters <coughs> understand that starting uh, from values is, is hard to go to color sometimes. But understanding values is why your colors will look strong. In fact... Uh, if you ever watch a traditional painter paint, usually mo like almost all of them, they have a palette. And with that palette, they actually change their, they'll have their local values. And each local value will have a variation of light, mid, and dark. So they have all their different values in terms of local values. And they have, in, in that tier, they have three regiments to that. So let's just move on though. I, I, don't, I can sit here all day and just talk about values. But the next thing would be structure. So when I look at someone's portfolio, the presentation of it and the structure of their portfolio pieces are all over the place. And as cool as it is to kind of have a lot of good work and a lot of work that is has a lot of variety, it's got to be good and it's got to look like you tried to make a good portfolio. You didn't just all of a sudden put everything in there. That's even though like when I submit my work, like usually I just submit it however, but in the actual format of your portfolio it should look like you're a professional that you're, you actually care and then also the structure of your work like the way that your work looks that's kind of where i want to hit on the most right now so when i talk about structure i'm talking about a few things one is the idea like is the idea really really cool like am i just looking at a picture of just a generic looking sci-fi soldier or a generic looking fantasy warrior um those are fine, 
but if is there a twist to it or is there something added to that that's usually something that i look for immediately when i see something like that it's like awesome that's a really cool idea um and it has nothing to do with the painting anymore it's like the idea is really cool um what's going on over there oh boy <laughs> could you at least turn down the volume when you plugged in your all right <laughs> So the next thing is, um, the next thing would be, like, so you have your idea, and the next thing would be the, the like, functionality. Like, I, I like to try to tell people, get the idea down first. Get the visuals looking, looking sweet. And then start to think about creatively how things could work. That's a lot of fun. They don't have to be 100% correct. Like, it doesn't have to be so functional that it could be built and, like, driven around. Unless that's the purpose of the design which could definitely be the case. But if you're just making a portfolio and that's something that you don't really care for entirely, you don't care that it has a ton of functionality, that's cool, but it should have some. It should have like a little bit of it. Enough that I feel like you thought about how it could potentially move and run around at a, even at the small capacity. And looking functional doesn't even necessarily mean it is functional, right? Like you look at the Transformers franchise. Those things are not entirely functional if we really break it down, but they look functional at a, at, a, at a glance, right? And that's kind of the important thing here. So you want your designs to have great ideas and have some sort of sense of uh, function. And then the last, last thing I'm going to talk about is quality. Quality is probably the biggest one. And there's two parts of quality. Um, what did I write down? I wrote these notes down and I wrote them too small and I can't even... Oh yeah, here we go. Looks done and lots of iterations. Okay, so looks done. What that means is like when you look at your portfolio, I want to see pieces of artwork that look completed, that look finished, that you tried to finish your paintings. And then iterations. Iterations is where you can keep them loose and sketchy. But what what makes your portfolio feel like there's quality to it and feels like it's a professional portfolio is that you have finished paintings, but you have paintings that represent what a fit, that what the finished painting, like how it led up to that. And what that shows your employer or potential employer is that you know how to iterate and that you can take, you can make changes on the fly and you can take, you know, criticism and do it and do lots of it. And that's really hard to find. You'd be surprised. Everybody, when they first get their job, they're happy, but then they have to draw a lot. And some people aren't prepared for that. And so you get to be prepared for that. And if you have evidence of this, it's very, very valuable. But, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So let's go back over it. Like values, having, you know, uh, a good sense of local values versus lighting. Structure, having a good idea along with some functionality. And then quality, making everything look finished, but showing the road that led up to it with iterations. And I think that's pretty much it. I think uh, with that, I th you guys will have enough information to kind of have a better sense of how to make your portfolio look. GDC is right around the corner. Um, I would highly recommend you guys prepare a decent looking portfolio, something that looks pretty cool and pretty good and follows a lot of what I just said. Um, but with that, I think we're good. But those are the, my those are my main gripes with portfolios. There's plenty of other reasons why your portfolio could, could be not up to par, but these are the three that come to mind immediately. And so, Good luck, guys, and I'll see you guys around next time.